smaller view. I mean, I wish I could see all of Gemma and Veronica at all times. But your setup is good, though. It's good. But it's like, ah, oh, you guys don't need this. This house behind me, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, we're all live. Perfect. All Perfect. right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our first Q and A session one, September edition. Um, we're your hosts, Veronica Castillo and Jamson Belozas. Um, for those of you who didn't know Eccentric Artists, it is the newest film collective in town. Woo! It was formed by a group of filmmakers who are longing for a community special this past few months. Our mission is to create an inclusive community that support underrepresented filmmakers to con create, connect, and collaborate. It's all about bringing people and be creative together, you know? Um, so here's the deal, folks. Veronica and I will be asking questions for the next 30 minutes, and then we will uh, we will open it up to the audience. If you have any questions you wanted to ask our featured artists today, enter them on a chat. And for those of you who are using AirMeet and want to be specifically be a camera with us, cool, right? <laughs> have a quick interaction with our artists, or I don't know, chill out with us for a sec, you know? Um, just click the raise hand button on the side of the screen. Also, we have two of our board members um, moderating from YouTube Live and AirMeet. Um, give it up with um, Tiffany and Nadine. Woo! Shout out. Shout out to Tiffany and Nadine. All right. So our first featured artist is Ashley Rapano. She's an actor and comedian based in Los Angeles. She just recently moved to LA from New York City, where she wrote and produced her critically praised one-woman show, Lessons with Lola, about her Filipino grandmother who uh, had dementia. She performed stand-up comedy, improv, and sketch at the People's Improv Theater, and she's worked on several other programs in New York City. I mean, whoa. When not on screen or doing stand-up, Ashley can be found practicing meditation, Muay Thai, playing the guitar, or planning her next adventure. She identifies as a Mestiza Filipina and has a bachelor's degree in stage and screen acting from UNLV. Woohoo! Welcome, Ashley. Our next featured artist is Rose Donahue. She's worked on independent film projects, sets, national commercials, music videos, and so many other more as a producer and as talent. In front of the camera, she loves doing talk show interview styles and brings her characters to life on screen. As a producer, she loves seeing the project through from start to finish. And she recognizes that every project, every project <laughs> has different needs depending on the client and depending on her role. She brings her very best energy on set every time and she's now based in LA. Welcome, Rose. Woo so thank you Q and a we're gonna show a short clip to showcase their wonderful work and then we'll start the q a so sit back and enjoy the show grab your popcorn <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna take a couple seconds waiting <laughs> waiting <laughs> tiffany we're waiting <laughs> Um, that's okay. <laughs> Trying to play the audio, the the file, but it didn't show up. That's so okay. let's show the clip again later. It's currently uploading again. No uh, problem. We can show it again later. Later. So let's start with the Q and A. First of all, we want to thank you, ladies, for you know coming out and being here with us and supporting eccentric artists. How are Thank you, you for having us. Um, well, I don't know if we can hear Ashley or not. I heard Ashley was a little delayed. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Cool. Thank you for having us is what Ashley had said earlier. Yes. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? What's going on? Uh, it's good. My room's sweaty right now. I have a lot of lights set up, and uh, I hope I put on enough deodorant for this meeting. 
We can't smell you. It's fine. Hello, hello, hear me. How are you doing, Rose? How's your day been? It's been good. Thank you for asking. You know, I um ventured outdoors today, got a little uh car wash, so big day. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's go dive into the business, you know. Um let's start with the beginning. Um what made you want to get into acting? Ashley, take it away. Got you, dude. So um, I I come from a family who a lot of us are, or a lot of my family members are sick or have been, you know, uh, dealt bad cards with ailments or, you know, like cancer, diabetes, dementia, all that kind of stuff, fun stuff going on in our house. So I come from a house of caregivers and, uh, you know, just figuring out how to take care of people. So I think growing up, I learned how to take care of people in non-conventional ways. And one of the things that I learned how to do is to take care of people through entertainment. So ever since I was a kid, I remember um, just entertaining people to take away from pain. And then as I got older, I realized how important catharsis is and how important entertainment is in the healing part of life. So I think just, just that and being able to, you know, naturally see how entertainment and, and making people laugh and, you know, just art in general helps in the healing process. Mm -hmm. uh for me it's the combination of loving stories and loving smiles so i've you know always just really enjoyed storytelling hearing stories getting wrapped up in them which i think is true for a lot of filmmakers and then sort of similar to ashley i loved making people smile when i was little i was kind of shy when i was really little and as i got older i was like I don't know when it hit me exactly, but I kind of became a little bit of a ham sometimes, like a little, you know, yeah. and um, <laughs> it just kind of ran with it. But it, it was so rewarding when people would be cheerful and excited. And, um, you know, Ashley is like a comedian extraordinaire. So it's been so fun seeing her work. And I got to do a class with her earlier this summer, which was awesome. And I'm hoping I haven't so far jumped into comedy as much in my performance, but um, it's not too late and I'm excited to keep pursuing that even more. Yeah, it's never too late, definitely. Um, so let's talk about finding work and gigs. How do you do that independently and how do you do that with an agent? Can you tell us about negotiating a deal or contract? Oh, I can't hear you. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you with a little delay, but you're here. Uh, we cannot hear Rose on our end. Yeah. Use your hands. Explain with your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, you <laughs> hard. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm going to try to lip read. Oh, okay. That's good, Ashley. That's good. No. No. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to go now, and then you can, yeah, got you. Yeah, got you. We're right here. We're right here. Um, so uh, finding gigs. Um, so before I was with my agent and my manager, um, I was finding gigs on my own independently. So I would be on websites such as Casting Networks, Actors Access, Backstage, all that stuff. There's so many of them now, but the main ones are like actors access and such. Um, so I find them individually, you know, just by myself um, through either open calls for for staged productions or anything, or, you know, just regular auditions and self tapes. And so now that I am with um, a manager and an agent, they send me material too. So they'll submit me for certain auditions as well. Um, and then I'll self tape for them and I'm still looking for work independently too. So it's a myriad of both, but it's all online and it's, it's very accessible now, which I am so thankful for, but also a, a really cool thing, um, that is happening is, you know, when you network and you meet people, things kind of naturally come together and, and projects naturally happen in this sort of like magic kind of sphere. So I love when, when things like that, you know, just get burst out of nowhere. That's yeah. awesome. Rose, are you back? Rose, how are you doing? No. Oh. Down on Rose. Yeah. Oh no. Hmm. Try to mute your your mic and then maybe unmute. 
Did that work? No. Would it help if you pulled the Zoom and you left and you came back? Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> you're totally good. <laughs> <laughs> well, go see you. I'll see. <laughs> so, actually, speaking about virtual auditions, like, what do you find? How do you prepare for an online audition? And then, how do you do it on like in person? Like, do you miss having like? the reactions and being able to read people like you know not auditioning it's so different online obviously <laughs> yeah of course um uh, you know when you're in a real room with real people you're looking at their faces and their eyes oh rose can you hear you can you hear me yes i can hear you yes, yes. <laughs> so sorry about that got a little to no, know no, you're fine. this is just that um now you guys can hear everything, everything going on in the background. So. <laughs> Welcome to my home. <laughs> so, I just asked Ashley about um, auditioning it virtually and the difference between auditioning like in person. Um, and she was mm -hmm. just letting us know her experience. Oh, great. Well, finish up what you're saying and then I'll jump in. And that's a great example of, of something too. Like when, when technical errors happen or something like that, it's so hard. It, you know, just completely runs you off your train of thought and everything too. When you're in a room and you're talking to an actual person, it's so easy to just, you know, get in the character and, and be in the role like that. Um, but I find online, uh, there's everything's new and there's so much uncertainty that people are either forgiving or they're more willing to play or it's just another aspect. So I feel like it's just, you know, just getting used to what we're given now. And I feel like we're going to have to get used to it for a while at least. So, but gosh, when I do see another person face to face, it feels so nice. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Rose? Yeah, I definitely like the face to face experience as well. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's almost like you get a feel of the people that you might be working with then, which is nice. And then also they can get a feel of what you're like right there, which is kind of good. Um, in terms of self tape type of stuff, it's cool because you have as many takes as you want to make it perfect, but it's also like, it must be perfect. You know, it's like easy to go a little bit overboard with it. Um, mm -hmm. And then in terms of this setup time and whatever makeup you're gonna wear and the wardrobe, you know, there's just a thought process, but there's a thought process for both, so like, not going to kick either way. Um, but I agree with Ashley. I definitely think that the self tapes and the um, online auditions are going to become the the new thing for quite a while. So it's good to just, you know, run with it and try your best. Do, do the best with what you have. And then as you're able to level up, just keep leveling up. Right. Yeah. Um, for those who are doing their first audition, you know, um, what to expect? Can you walk us through the auditioning process? So, I guess, uh, well, so for a live in-person audition, you're going to want to bring a printed out headshot and resume with you. Uh, you will likely go into a room wherever the audition is happening. You'll have a waiting room you'll probably sign in or there will be someone to help you sign in. And then once it's your turn to go in, you go in and you bring your enthusiastic and authentic self into that space mm -hmm. and you hand in whatever information you need to hand in. Uh, potentially you drop that off in front or you give it to whoever's in the audition room watching you. And then you do your performance. Uh, come prepare, have your lines memorized, have a type of performance ready, but then also be ready for notes. And I would say it's kind of similar online. I've, I'll be honest, because of the pandemic, I have been focusing more on uh, pre-production stuff, like the producer side of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, so Ashley, if you have more to say about this, I would think it's a sort of similar thing, but just get your computer or whatever recording device all geared up and ready. I love that. I agree with a lot of what you said. For me, I think uh, my biggest piece of advice would be to get familiar with your material and know your material like head to toe, inside and out, like the back of your hand, and then throw everything away. Like take all that you practiced and all that you rehearsed and just like toss it in the garbage. 
um, and just play. That's yeah. that's what we're here to do. We're we're actors, we're artists, and we're just storytellers, and we get paid to play for our lives. And I think that's great. So just play and have an open mind. Be prepared for everything that you just did, and everything that you prepared for days to do to just like go out the window and to get a whole new direction coming in towards you. But yeah, just be ready to play. And uh, it's not don't don't you know have something prepared to the T and don't like create, don't watch 72 hours of this show in advance and like prepare, like, you know, like build the whole thing up. Just be yourself and, you know, bring your character and yourself to this like beautiful crossroads. Right. Now, okay. Was there ever an audition where you wish you could have done it differently? Every single one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, so talking about like your process as an actor, is there like a method you use or is it just changing depending on the project? How do you go about that? So um, I would say that going with the classic acting techniques is helpful to have an understanding of them. Um, mm -hmm. I've you know done a lot of reading with Meisner and I've done some classes with the Alexander technique specifically for breathing and breath manipulation and stuff like that. So it's nice to have a little bit of everything. Like I'm reading um, Ivana Chubbuck's book right now, The Power of the Actor. So I wouldn't say I have like a specific technique that's like my go-to every time. It's kind of a smattering and uh, depends a little bit on what I'm working on. I fully agree with you actually. I, in, I mean, in school you learn one thing, out of school, you learn another thing, and then you're always learning as an actor, too. You're always supposed to be taking classes. You're always supposed to be constantly, like, you know, you never want to get rusty. That's your thing. So if you're not in a class, you're, like, working on scenes with somebody, or you're working on monologues by yourself, or you're doing A, B, C, D. So I think it's just taking everything that you've ever known and just finding what works for you, honestly. Like, some days, something will work for me. Some days, something else will work for me. And it's, you know, if it's a dramatic thing or if it's a comedic thing, there's different processes for each thing that you do. So I think it's just finding what makes you comfortable and finding what makes you happy and confident. Right. Yeah, so let's go into improv with that because I know that's a totally different like world. Tell us how you like, do you prepare for improv? Like for someone who's not like, who's never done it and who wants to try mm -hmm. it. I Tell do, me. I'm scared, but I want to. Tell us like, how do you start improv? How do you prepare for it? You do it. You just do it. Do it. <laughs> Honestly, I think every single person in the world should take an improv class at some point in their life because it helps you immensely just in conversation. It teaches you how to listen to another person without like waiting to respond or having something in your mind. It helps you problem solve in real life. It helps you just, you know, it, it has so many skills that help you in every facet of life. And it's kind of amazing um, in a way. I think, you know, it's a form of therapy almost too. But just do it. Sign up for a class or just do it. I, I'm sure... Uh, every single conversation or every bit of your life has some sense of improv in it, you know? Because, I mean, this is, we don't know what we're, I mean, we're kind of, we kind of know what we're talking about. We were given it online. But, <laughs> you know, it's it's so natural to the human being. It's just the process of breaking it down into certain steps might be mechanical and might cause you to rethink certain things. But mm -hmm. it's so great. It, it helps you, even in my producer mind, even in, you know, everything that I do that's not acting, it's, it's helped me figure out things more. So just do it. Sign up for a class. That's it. And in preparation, all you do is, you know, just like the people you're doing improv with or, you know, trust them or trust the process or trust the scene that it will make sense in the world. Wow. Yeah. Um, how about you, Rose? Have you tried improv before? I have, and I really enjoy it. I think it's, it's a lot of fun. It's nice being able to perform but not have a fun thing to do it's a fun exercise and I completely agree with Ashley that every part of our life has some element of improv to it like you're going to get a call from a client one day like how are you going to respond might as well have that m muscle flex to have a good response you know or just something something helpful or thoughtful or eloquent enough to pass you know so it's good just good practice across the board and now, okay, so improv, you know, some, it's pretty much based on, like, your material, the content that you're working with, and you just go, like, you're free to, like, experiment. 
But when you're working with scripted material, how do you like come together with the director to talk about the story and the character? So it depends a little bit on the director. Um, and I do try to follow the director's lead since this is their film. Uh, so that's something I keep in mind. I would say that similar to auditioning, I try to prepare. I try to have my notes ready on the character. I've read the script a couple of times. Um, I have come up with my own thoughts about what we're trying to convey in the film and then what my character's objectives are and obstacles are. And then just, you know, from this first read through, kind of have that conversation and listen to what they're looking for and think about the work I've already done and then how I can apply that mm -hmm. to the performance I have. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, completely the same. It, it really depends on the director. It's, it's so, so, so much depends on the director and how they work and how their brain, it's like, um, like love languages, you know? You, every single person has a different love language. You speak to every single person a different way and you have different relationships with each person. So it's kind of figuring out what the director's love language is and how they speak and, and what math they use in their head and how you can form with that too. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, this particular topic is very beneficial for me and Veronica, I think, since we're both directors, you know. Um, for me personally, I, I'm very interested with like the acting methods and like uh, if they can do improv as well, you know. Um, whenever I work with actors, um, that's kind of like my way to like uh, getting to know them more. It's not just about like I'm the director now. I, I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna say what I want to do, you know. But to also kind of like um, get to know the actor in a very uh, emotional level as well. So, uh, which also leads me to my next question: um, What do you guys appreciate the most from the director? Say that one more time. I think I missed the last like word you said. Uh, but um, what do you appreciate the most from a director? I would say, so I definitely appreciate just having open communication. Mm -hmm. And then from a director, I appreciate when I get um, story-related direction. Mm -hmm. So rather than do that but quieter, something like do that but there's a baby you don't want to wake up in the other room. You know, something so that, because I have all these, like, stories I'm making up in my head because I'm an actor and that's what we do. And so I, and I'm having these behaviors, like I'm expressing behaviors when I'm on camera. So it makes, it's a little easier to translate and, like, feel a motivation or, like, a reason for the behavior I'm about to portray rather than just, like, oh, I have to be quieter. Okay, sorry. You know? <laughs> That's, I think that's probably one of my favorite, my like most helpful direction things for when I work with a director. Mm -hmm. Right on. Totally. For me, it's open communication too, 100%. I think in anything that you're doing, open communication is the biggest way that you can get anything done with another person involved. Um, but for me, I, I really, really, really like, and this is done, I think I learned this a couple of times in college with um, both a theater professor and a film professor, but um, I enjoy when a director figures out a way to get me to the place that they want on my own. So if it's like saying a certain phrase or, you know, letting me do the math in my own head of how to get to a certain place, but not exactly saying it and letting my own, you know, brain work the way it works. Um, yeah. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. You'll get there on your own if not. <laughs> <laughs> more like about your journey as like actors why did you decide to go into producing and would you go into different departments i know actually you do editing too so why producing and then would you try other departments go for it ashley cool um i i just wanted to be in charge of my own work there's so it's such a big pool that we're in and there's so many actors in the world and there's so many projects to do, oh my goodness. And at some point you get this feeling of helplessness. 
as an actor. It's like you feel like you're not in control of anything because it sometimes feels like you're not. You're just at the will of, you know, the internet or the submission button you just press. So being <laughs> here allows me to take my career and my life into my own hands and really get hands-on into the work. Also, it's completely taught me so much about being an actor and what is beneficial in being an actor and how to be a better actor for people in crew or, you know, the creatives on the team as well. And I think being a producer and learning how to make my own work in that area, you know, putting that producer hat on, it's also made me so curious of, you know, directing and, and cinematography and um, editing was just, it, I had to do it in the producing process, you know, it was just something that came along part for the course. And I think in order to fully like, you know, create this thing, the more you understand about the thing that you're making, the more you can, you know, have your head in the game for it. So mm -hmm. it's it's not possible with everything, you know, but as long as you have some sort of knowledge about every aspect, or, you know, are aware of it at least, I find I feel more confident with things. Right. I'm 100% there with Ashley. Um, having just a idea of what all is going on and <clears throat> what other people's roles are and like it's it's super educational in terms of like what my role is on set i'm not going to step on anyone's toes because as a producer i know what everybody should be doing right. so as an actor <laughs> i also have that knowledge when i'm on set and i'm like okay like i'm just an actor today not just an actor, but I'm, I'm an actor today. Like I'm going to go to wardrobe and I'm going to sit and wait until I'm called. And like, that's all I'm going to do. And it's totally fine. Whereas with a producer, I'm just like seeing the project from start to finish. And, um, it just, I trust myself to keep things organized. So it's always nice to know if it's especially a project that matters to you, that someone is taking ownership of that. Uh, so those would probably be some of the main things that I've liked about it. And also similar to Ashley, to have control over your work and to be able to make things that you're excited about. Um, when I f first got into doing on-camera stuff, it was when I first got to Vegas and it was for a talk show. And we had never done or we hadn't done a lot of... Um, on-site interviews and stuff where we'll go other places. We would always just like be on set or at least for what I had done, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so then I had like the opportunity to go do my own thing and like see how it goes. And it just kind of was like, oh, I have these skills and that's that's what it takes to do producing stuff. And that's useful to have. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I add something too? Yes, yeah, yeah, please, yeah, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> Uh, being, you know, kind of putting different hats on and understanding different departments and stuff, I realize it helps me respect different departments even more so. It helps me help them more. So, for instance, understanding the role of a director, understanding the role of a producer, as me, when I'm in my actor seat or my actor hat is on, I can say, what can I do in this scene? What can I do in this situation to better help, you know, the lighting department or the camera department or the director do their job easier without having to, you know, spew out a bunch of different words at me? Mm hmm Tagging on that, having even the slightest idea of some of the gear uh, language and needs and stuff, I think is super helpful as well. And I've, I mean, there's been times on set where as an actor, like I'm able to ask people questions or something like the AC has some downtime and he can show me some polarizing lenses. And I'm like, oh, that's super cool. You know, and it's just having like that openness to feel comfortable learning about the whole range of things that goes into filmmaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this next question, I feel like it's very relatable, not only for filmmakers, but all the artists, you know. Um, how do you balance your time um, to work on passion projects while also taking our taking projects that financially support you? I mean, do you even have the luxury to choose, you know? Great question. <laughs> um, well, we all need to make ends meet, right? So that may be a job that has nothing to do with the industry, and that's totally okay. You know, um, for for me, I've been fortunate to be working with Quantum Arc Media, which is Las Vegas based, the past few years, and. That work has been specifically around um, paying clients for things that are like convention and trade show, 
also music videos and shorts and features, but the bigger budgets are generally with business related things. So if you can find a way to apply your skill, either producing or acting in this more lucrative field, I would definitely recommend it. Um, and like for acting, you can do presentation things, you know, there's conventions. I'm obviously conventions are a little slow right now in terms of not being able to gather, but you know, they want people presenting, they want people presenting their product. They want people to feel like they're engaged with this person presenting their product and they want to visit the booth and all of that. Or I'm sure as more and more of these events go online, they're going to want personalities, you know, entertaining people between sessions and stuff like that. So I would say finding um, a way that you can use your skills in creative and more financially driven things is the way to go. And then, of course, every actor wants to just be doing creative things. So keep doing as many as you can and build up the reel, build up the resume, build up your day rate, increase your day rate as you go. And hopefully that'll that'll be your 100% in no time at all. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> I dig that a lot. I dig that a lot. For me, it's almost like um, flirting with the danger in that you want to know where it feels like you're burning both sides of the candle, but also like, don't do it. So, so um, for me, it's really figuring out the balance of, you know, how much can I do without it being too much? And how much can I do without feeling a sense of overwhelm? Or what's the top of the things that I can do without like, you know, overflowing with things? Um, so for me, I guess it's taking on, I, I, I do this horribly. I should do this better, but I take on as much as I can. And, you know, it's so delicious and easy as an artist to take on everything and to say yes to literally everything. And, you know, when you get a yes, you, this is a business of no's. Like you're constantly hearing no's in your face all the time. So when you get that yes, oh boy, it's so good. Oh. And so you want to say yes to everything. And every yes you come that comes your way, you want to just grab it. But for me, it's really important that I know how to say no. And I know how to say yes, but I'm going to need help. Or yes, but. And creating kind of a boundary for myself or keeping myself safe safe in that aspect too. Um, but yeah, I agree with what you said. Just finding a balance of like financially taking care of yourself and being able to create from your heart as well. Also, if you really want to do it, it's going to happen. Like if you really, really want to do something, you're going to sacrifice some of your, you know, other aspects of your life in order for this to work. Maybe that means like, sure, you work two jobs in a 40 hour work week or a 50 hour work week. And then you're going to go to like six auditions this week and you're just going to, you know, go a little crazy or cry or, you know, eat something. I don't want to eat. But it's, I think it's just part of it, you know, like figuring out where you stand and how much you can go through your day while taking care of yourself while, you know, keeping food on the table. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Like um, being able to manage those things. Um, and it's a struggle that a lot of like filmmakers and just artists in general um, who just start out, they don't, I mean, you have a nine to five job or a regular job, and but you still have to have that time to put in the passion projects, the creative projects. And essentially that's why we created Eccentric Artists so that we can fuel creativity in our community and make sure that there's enough projects and you know, events that people want to join, you know, to get that started. So, Ro, since you work lo you work closely with local filmmakers with Cinema Crunch, a podcast dedicated to providing information and resources to filmmakers, can you tell us how you choose your topics? You start with the topic or the idea first, or do you revolve it around your guest? Great question. So for me, I revolve it around the guest, uh, generally. Mm -hmm. I usually, um, to be honest, one of the... One of the harder parts of doing a podcast or talk show is getting a guest lineup that you feel really great about. Um, I love people making art. I am here for it. But at the <laughs> same time, I want to provide useful content for my listeners. And not everyone is at a point where they're really ready to be interviewed about a project that they worked on. Um, so that's a, kind of a tough thing that was a little tough to work around, but total, but you know, as I figured out people that I was interested in, I would do research on them and I would reach out to them and I would pretty much just 
find out what they were good at and what they were interested in because it's interesting to talk to people about what they're interested in, if that makes sense. You know, if I, uh, you know, had Ashley on and asked, I'm correct me if I'm wrong, I might be way off and was like, tell me about your favorite principle in calculus. What, I, what was that? I would cry. You cry? Oh, see, that's the last thing I want. Last thing I want. That's not my style of interview at all. Some people maybe want to do that. That's not what I'm doing. And I think it's just more enjoyable for everyone if, if to watch and listen. Everyone participating is having fun. Um, sure. And then in terms of finding people, uh, you know, obviously there's so many talent locally in Las Vegas, which is fantastic. But then again, in terms of the final listener gaining value, it was important to reach outside of Vegas as well. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, like NAB came to town, the National Broadcasters, National Association of Broadcasters. And I just went on their website and I looked at every single guest speaker and I contacted pretty much all of them, or at least maybe not all of them. That's excessive. That's excessive. Maybe <laughs> 30, just a cold email to all of to the 30 of them. And, um, you know, I got mm, five responses or something, but I, they were already vetted by a legitimate organization. So they had something worth saying. And then once I got their approval, I was like, great, I will now do research on them. So that was a, a lot of information that somewhat answered your question and somewhat provided information about other things. But uh, yeah, that's some of the talk show stuff that's helpful. And do you work with the guests? Um when creating these questions, are there specific questions that are like given to me? I'll ask them, but I, I or do you something? Is it you do it yourself? Like you do the research and then you make the questions. That's a great question. I do most of it myself, but I will occasionally ask them in advance of what they might want to talk about, or mm -hmm. I will find information about them and say, "Can we talk about this stuff?" Uh, just so they are somewhat prepared. Some people. Mm -hmm don't care at all and they're just like i'm here what are we talking about and then <laughs> some people need a list of questions ahead of time right so i just, again my my attitude towards the hosting thing is to create a comfortable fun experience um and that means coordinating with the guests depending on what their needs are that's perfect yeah. um my next question is for ashley um you've lived in several cities and be a part of um, communities that embrace art um, was there ever an instance where you felt like you have to change how you present yourself uh, based on where you live? Or like, has there been a different um, artistic pressure? Oh my God, this is so deep. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you say the question again? I want to make sure I answer it fully. Um, do you feel like you need to change how you present yourself? based on the location where you live, you know? So my answer now would have been different a couple of years ago too. Um, now I feel like no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, completely be yourself. No matter who you're talking to, it could be, you know, an A-list celebrity. It could be your your age, your representation. It could be your mother, your, you know, who the one person that watches your videos online or something. Be the same with every single person you meet or interact with or, you know, a couple of years ago, when I was just starting my career, I was fresh out of college and I was very confused. And I think I wanted to impress the wrong people or be someone I wasn't or, you know, run away from my problems instead of facing certain things, and certain you know, trying to be who I wanted to be instead of who I was, if that makes sense. And I think now it has a lot to do with um, accepting yourself as an artist, as an actor, and knowing that you are enough in all you do. You are whole you are just fine the way you are you don't have to create this whole like sense of whatever else you are or whoever you want to be you 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 that's what is great you that's what we're here for that's what we want to hear that's what we want to see we want to see you do your art and your work you know we don't want to see the you that i don't know you had a dream about at 4 a.m and you decided that's what you're going to be today um so yeah i think just be you in all moments no matter where you are or what you're doing that's beautiful <laughs> yeah that's really beautiful all right, so we know COVID has affected, you know, professional, like an independent film 
production companies. But we want to know how it's affected you personally and professionally. Well, I moved to LA. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so honestly, it's, it kind of worked out, right? Um, in terms of professional stuff, as I've been still producing stuff in Las Vegas because I had people I was working with already. Fortunately, so much of that can be done from the distance. So it's not an issue. can do that online. And then, uh, as I said earlier, I've personally been focusing a lot more on like personal development and producing during this time i'm i'm being extra safe regarding pandemic practices so uh which maybe i will maybe it'll i'll look back and it'll seem excessive but for now better safe than sorry so uh, it's been hard because i love being on set and playing and working you know so that's really tough but to have the space uh, to do the, you know, personal growth reflection and the pre-pro for other projects I'm working on has been, has been kind of a, a silver lining. Mm -hmm. My turn? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you're saying, I love what you're talking about. So, <laughs> I agree with you, actually, but I, I also think it comes back to what I was talking about earlier, you know, burning the candle at both ends. I think every actor and artist was just like hitting the road so hard and you know this is such a terrible time and things suck and people are sick and i think you know you have to mention that into the universe and be thankful for what you have as well while you're recognizing that there are bad things going on but also i'm very thankful for this time and i feel bad when i say that sometimes but my therapist says it's okay so I, this is mine too mine too i feel you <laughs> But this is a time to sit back, you know, like you don't have to look at auditions every single day. You can sit back and work on yourself because I feel like as me, as my actor in my journey, I am so busy sometimes taking care of other things and submitting to things and keeping food on the table or doing X, Y, Z. I forget to take care of myself. So during this time, I've started therapy, done a lot of like just personal work and personal healing. And boy, oh boy, it helps you as an artist exponentially. Ah, oh, I suggest it to everybody. But yeah, um, so I was in New York and a week before the pandemic hit, I moved out. So it was just crazy wow. timing. It worked out really well. Um, but I'm, I'm thankful for that. Also, I get to spend time with my family. Otherwise, I would have been just working all the time. And now I get to spend time with my family. And you know, you never know. So it's everything, but it's. I have to acknowledge that there is bad going on, but I am thankful for the positive silver lining that is here too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, are there any projects you get you, you want to promote or like recently released? Well, so nice of you to ask, <laughs> Ashley. Do you have any off the top of your head? You can go first. Oh, sure. Um, I was just in an episode of Homicide City on the Investigation Discovery Channel. Yeah, it was really cool. The person I play, oh my gosh, she is amazing. And her story, I, I am in awe that I even was able to tell this story because it's so beautiful. And she is a, like a badass, dude. And um, But that was really fun. But more so, the story and the professional experience I got from it was incredible as well. Um, but Rose, do you have anything that you want to know? Um, so a short film, uh, The Tunnels, was just released on YouTube. Christopher, Christopher Stiles, pardon me, was the director. Uh, so that was exciting to just, you know, see a piece of creative work. So definitely go check that out. I know that we just finished some edits on a sci-fi, short sci-fi project I was working on called Gin and Safi. I don't have the release information for you guys, but if you are looking for a little out-of-this-world footage then I'll, I'll keep you posted <laughs> all right so thank you ladies for taking our answers and well now i'm going to open up to the, our audience if you're on air meet please be sure to raise uh, your hand and then you can ask questions uh, via webcam and if you're on the chat we'll read those questions now all right so it's open to the audience now if you guys want to uh, ask, go ahead. If you want to be on the webcam and ask them personally, you totally can. Jensen, you can raise your hand. 
<laughs> you want me to? This is the question. Okay, so from Christine. First question. Hi, everyone. I'm wondering if you could each speak to your most memorable audition. Great question, Christine. That's a good one. Thank you, Christine. Um, so I guess, so one of my most memorable auditions was for a feature film and we, I did a cold read. I mean, it was a cold read audition. Um, so I got the script upon arrival and had a few minutes to look it over before going in. In my head, I was like, oh, I could either do this like soulful, angry, upset, or I could do this like big, angry, upset. And I went for the soulful vibe just because in my head, I was like, well, I, this was, a, I was a little bit newer to acting on film. I had done more stage stuff. And I was just like, in my head, I was like, well, you need to be a little more controlled on film because if you do it too big, like on stage, it's overacting, like it's too much. So I tried that. I did it and they were like, yeah, oh, cool, that was good, that was good. And then one of the people there was like, Can you do it just like angry, like bigger? And I was just like, I'm so glad you asked, you know, and I got to do it. That, that doesn't happen every time, right? They're not going to take the time to give you notes every time. But that's definitely an audition that I'm like thankful for and appreciate. And I still I keep it in mind when I go to future auditions because um, sometimes it's good to go big. Because it's easier to bring it down for a lot of people than to start small and then bring it up. So, uh, again, it depends where I'm going. But I definitely feel like I learned a lot out of that audition and then out of doing that project. So that's probably one of my favorite, most memorable moments. Ashley? Um, for me, it was, I don't know how many years ago, but I had just moved to New York. Like I think a week into moving into New York. Um, I was auditioning for all these Broadway shows. Who let me do that? I was just so fun. And it was such a wonderful experience. But um, I remember for Stomp, the music, the, you know, the show in on, in New York, um, we were in line for so many hours. But that's, you know, the thing that you do. It's just part of the course. Um, and I get in and, you know, it's not, it's acting, but music and percussion and everything too. And I just remember just playing and having fun and, and you know, they're like not overthinking it. Um, I think I was like all hyped up. I'm like, I just moved to New York energy, you know? Uh, so I, I just played and I got a call back for it too. And so that was fun. Um, just that feeling of, oh, cool. This is a thing that can happen. And so during the call, like, it was the same thing, just just playing and everything. I obviously didn't get it. I'm not in stone. But just having that experience. And, you know, uh, I think it's refreshing at the same time to just know people want to see you again too. Also, just going for the biggest things. Like, who's telling you you can't do X, Y, Z? Who's telling you you can't audition for these big things if they're going to see people, you know? Like, just take a leap. Right. I would have loved to see you in Stomp, Ashley. Like, I mean, I pan over here, I'll just do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, another question from Tyler. To Ashley, when working on the play where you played your grandma, was it like to play someone you knew personally? Was it easier or more difficult? It's a little bit of both. It, that's a weird answer, but it's it's easier in the sense that, yeah, you have this character lined up for you and everything, right? Like, you don't have to think too much of, you know their backstory, you've lived their backstory with them, but it's mm. exponentially harder because you respect that person. So, I mean, you have to respect every person that you play, ever, but you have this sense of there's so much more pressure on you to get it right. I mean, you know, it, instead of creating whatever you want in your head or kind of playing and, and going different routes with things and experimenting, you stay true. Like it's it's set for you. You have to own this character and be this person and, and really dedicate to knowing them in and out, even though they're not around or they may be around. Um, and when I was playing a real person in Homicide City too, that was another thing, like you, that's a person that's going to watch what you're doing. It's not a person who was deceased like my grandmother was, but um, this is a person that's going to see what you're doing. So I think it's just having that in the back of your mind and just really respecting who they are and what they've been through and knowing that they're another human person. And I think that helps you play the characters that aren't real as well. Hmm. Yeah. Um, 
I can actually relate to that. I've been doing documentaries and there's like this pressure of like, they are real people. They're not fictional. You need to like justify their, you know, personality and like character. All right. So our next question is from Marty DSW. Was there anything from your gr from growing up that was influential in your education and career? Oh, and hi from Philadelphia. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> um, Ashley, would you like to go, or should I jump in? Since dude, she's in. Um, <laughs> I so appreciate you for coming, Mom. I know it's a little late over there. Oh um, so, yes, yeah, something from my childhood. Well, obviously my mom. Like, I have to say that, oh, which I, I do I appreciate all of the support that both she and my father gave me through my childhood and adulthood. So, um, and my brother as well. Just having support from family, I think, is helpful as an artist. Um, or else making your own family as either an addition or an alternative. I would say my, you know, creating my family as a, my friends and family as well has also been very helpful as I was growing up and as I've become a young adult and gained some distance from my family, which is totally normal and natural. Mm -hmm. So um, having good people around me is encouraging and inspiring. And then I guess just I liked watching old movies and I liked reading and when I um, I would do a little play with a friend every summer uh, which was we were literally five so it wasn't like brilliant or anything but that I think was when I started enjoying presenting and like making people laugh or entertaining people so those are a few things that have uh, motivated me and helped me and inspired me from my past oh. also some great teachers got to give a shout out to the teachers got to give out a shout out to all of the teachers online right now teaching the children all of that okay right. sorry I had to throw that in. <laughs> <laughs> um Actually, for me i would say um I didn't want to do this I, for the longest time. I would like did not want to be an actor. I didn't want to be an artist. I I tried to major in political science in college. I I tried to do everything but this for the longest time. But no matter what I did, dude, I like however long it took me, I'd always come back to it. And it's just like a, a force. So I would just say, listen to your heart. And and doing all of this work just taught me how to listen to my heart and listen to my brain and when I should make decisions with this part of my body and this part of my body. And mostly I make them from here. Um, but yeah, just listen to your heart. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to add one little thing because you said that, Ashley. Um, I love performance. And then through high school, college, I got very distant from it, actually. Kind of like, not on purpose, but I had given up a little. I've kind of been like, that's not a realistic career. Like, I can't do that with my life. But then I kind of came back to me. So I totally identify and feel you with that kind of experience. Mm -hmm. um, second question from Christine. I'm also curious to hear if you have any tips or advice for someone trying to get started with acting or producing. Good question. Ashley? Just do it. <laughs> the, the phrase is so great because it's true. You just... Instead of instead of thinking about doing it, just do it. Create an account online, or better yet, just like sit in your room and, and play with your camera, or like be silly on screen, or uh, like say for example, if you like Grey's Anatomy, you're like, oh my gosh, that scene was amazing. Do it. Put it out. Put it out. Do it on your own. Um, and and just producing. If you want to make the scene in real life, I mean, copyright who's aside, that's a whole thing too. Um, just do it on your own. Uh, yeah, that's that's the biggest thing is to just. Take the leap of faith and, and do it and see, you know, one, is this really right for me? Two, how much do I love it? Three, like, I can do it. Mm -hmm. Couldn't agree more. And you can do it from anywhere. Sure, we've got New York, L.A. as like the lead hubs, Atlanta, Vancouver. If you are anywhere in the world and you have some friends or if you're social distancing by yourself and you got a phone or a computer, 
go for it and start there and then build up. Like, don't ever let what your, you think your future needs to be stop you from doing something now. All right. So this is from Angel Mendoza. Have you been in projects where you produce and perform it? If so, is it hard to not be a producer while on stage or in camera? And finally, what are some personal tricks you use to separate the two? Well, hello, Angel. Thank you so much for tuning in today and for that awesome question. That is a great question. I um, have definitely had a tough time with that in the past. And my recommendation is to have a producing partner or at least just like someone to help out a little bit with whatever needs to happen in that that day-to-day -day experience whether it's checking people in or like ordering lunch or something um because all that needs to get done uh so just not doing it alone is pretty much my big recommendation when you're on a set and then if you're just doing something by yourself then you know Take your time as much as you can. Get your stuff set up. Think about your costume. Think about where you're going to put your tripod and give yourself the time to do that so that you are taking care of yourself when you're going into that emotional place of performing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with you, dude. I think it's all, I, I talk about hats a lot because it helps me visualize things more. So. I, I'll be like, I'm putting on my hat right now. I'm putting on my producer hat now. But I think it's also coming in the preparation of things, too. I will be prepared down to the T of, like, the minute and everything to, you know, like, crazy stuff. But the more prepared I am, the more I'm prepared, like, okay, it's time to shut this part of my brain off. I'm an actor now, you know? And the more I know my lines, the more I know the times, the more I know who's going to be on set. Also, like you said, have people there with you, too. That's helped me so much. The people that I've produced with, I can hand off, okay, the director's here, <laughs> and I put this hat on now. So, yeah, I think it's just having a team of people you love and trust, and if it's yourself, take it slow and, and really take your time with the process, too. Yeah. I think you wonderfully said it. I'm loving what you're saying, Rose. I, I love everything that you're talking about. I've been enjoying this so much, guys. Thanks. Back at you. And these questions, you guys, like the time right. you took to come up with them, I really appreciate it. Yeah, um, so this is the last question from Christine. How do you deal with nervousness and audition and prevent it from coming true? Would love to hear what works for you all. That's great. So, oh, yes. Um, so a long time ago, I took this class. Pretty sure it was a scam, but I took this class. And um, the, the one thing that I remember from this, and I'm pretty sure it makes up for the whole being a scam thing. But they said, if you're not nervous, you're not doing it right. And that may not help everybody, honestly, but it helps me at least. So I know if there's a sense of, you know, nervousness, I know that I care about it. I know that I'm doing it right or not right per se, but I know I, I'm dedicated enough or not enough, but I'm dedicated to it, that I'm enjoying it. Um, but honestly, it's just being aware of your thoughts, being mindful. I, I meditate a lot and I'm just, you know, in tune with your body and your mind. Don't let your anxiety get a hold of you. Because there are times, like, if, let's say you're backstage in a theater show. Dude, if you're about to go through those curtains and it's, like, running 20 miles an hour, you're going to be like, oh, God. You know? It's so easy to stop the tracks in the way when you're on the way to something. But, um, yeah, meditate and be mindful for me. That helps. Rose? Thank you. That I love that. Completely agree. The whole nervousness is both um, – a mental thing, but also a physical thing. Um, so having so that mental mindfulness is absolutely key. Uh, for me, when I'm nervous, sometimes it's like embarrassingly physical. My heart rate goes up. I get all red. Uh, I think maybe the red hair emphasizes the redness, you know, so it's, uh, <laughs> it can be a mess. But it's a great question because I have learned some things to help manage that the mindfulness is key um i'm a very physical person having done sports through my young adulthood and childhood and just being an actor so 
if I can do some stretching, if I can just feel re- like I am really connected to my body, that helps a lot because then I can have some level of like control over what's going on. And then breathing. Like I think for a lot of people's nervous response and including myself is shortness of breath or not taking deep breaths, which can cause all the heart stuff, can cause the redness, can cause speech problems or tightness in your throat. All of that throws off your performance. Um, So keeping in mind my end goal is that I want to do a good performance and it will benefit me now to do things that will be calming to me. So yeah, stretching, mindfulness, deep breaths. Um, Can I do one for you guys? Yeah. Can I do a breath for you guys? <laughs> so this is from um, I'm not an, a, t- a teacher with the Alexander technique, but this is something I learned while doing the class. It's called a whispered ah. So you do a deep breath in, and then you release it, and you kind of um, push your tongue a little bit to the back of your mouth. I will do it for you, and then I will explain it hopefully better. So deep breath in. So you hear that sound, right? Okay. And it's it's something you can do quietly. So it's not like super weird if you have other people are around. <laughs> so that's one of my go to <laughs> well, Thank you so much. These are wonderful tips and advices for, you know, actors and even just filmmakers in general. Um, we're going to show you the quick clip um, soon. So Tiffany, whenever you're ready, roll that clip. <laughs> Still grabbing the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> I can't create it on my own. I can conduct a charged mini power source around me. <laughs> I weaned him from his pacifier when he was eight months old. I am a monster. No. Huh? You little bitch. Over the end, don't like you no more. Get the fuck out. That was a really short clip, but wow. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thanks for putting that together, you guys. Yeah, this has been amazing. Thank you, everyone, for all your questions. We are now wrapping up Q&A session one. Woo! Woo! I have a question. Yeah. Before we go, um, Veronica and Jem, like, what's happening with you guys? I want to know what to be on the lookout for for what you guys are doing. You want to answer that first? Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm actually working on a feature documentary called Crave. It's about um, artists who uses their art to create a positive impact, especially for the social movement. Wow, that's really exciting! I can't wait for that. So I'm also producing a feature film called Critical Incident. It's in development right now. And it's about a housekeeper who is going through a very surreal and personal experience. Uh, we are shooting in June of next year, so keep an eye out for that. All right, so. Please support eccentric artists by going to our events. And you know what's coming? Our writing group It's coming up this Friday. September 18 at 2.30 p.m. Please RSVP to our website. Link in the description. Like, subscribe. And we might be in TikTok. Who knows? Follow us at eccentricartist.space. Again, thank you to our featured artists, Rose, Ashley. You were amazing. Please make sure to check them out on our website where you can find their journal entry. You can find their website, their links to their social media. Get to know them more. And, of course, thank you to the viewers who are watching who are gave us questions. Thank you, ladies, for even asking us about us. That's amazing. We love you. And um, wait, really quick, fun question. Shrek 1 or Shrek 2? That's hard. (laughs) (laughs) I'd like to hear you. You can hear me? I said Shrek 1. I was nervous because I don't want to, like, have her, But I just memorized the entire thing as a child. So, yeah. No. In the morning, I'm making waffles. Like, everyone loves I just can't. Like, Donkey was amazing. Mm-hmm. Shrek is amazing. 
Fiona is amazing. I just it's a masterpiece. I don't know. <laughs> masterpiece. Yeah, that's a nice rock. You know, I love that rock. You no, know, I just I don't know. I just literally would watch it and say all the lines with all of the characters. So Donkey was my favorite. Yeah. But, you know, obviously. <laughs> Um, one more time thank you guys so much for having us on it's great and i love the work eccentric is doing and i i'm so excited to see what comes out thank of you it. thank you thank you, you. Thank you everyone so have a wonderful you. night we will see you next time closing time <laughs> all right thank you so much have a great night you guys take care everyone we'll see you soon bye